back to it. Why goodbye? When he was when he was five years old, we saw a show uh, that your dad before about work. It was a different kind of show. Uh, but this one is more like a mind kind of thing. You know, it's really really interesting. You know, I, I know the family since I'm a kid, so I know he was always running around um, doing magic stuff. But I didn't realize he had become such an accomplished uh, illusionist and, and magician. So is this your yeah. first time seeing the show? Or? Yes, first time. First time. First time. Is it possible to predict the future? Is it really possible to predict the future? What do you think? No. 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 Skeptics, huh? Anybody say yes? Yes. Yeah. All right. We have kind of both. Well, you know what? I don't really know the answer to that question, but maybe, just maybe, the answer is inside of this scroll. Many years ago, when I was a kid, I had the opportunity to meet one of the greatest mentalists who ever lived. His name was Joseph Dunninger. Some of you might have heard of him. Here you go. In my opinion, the greatest feat that Dunninger ever performed was his prediction of a chosen telephone number. Anyway, after years of practice and experimentation, trial and error, tonight, together with your help, we are going to attempt what many consider to be the most difficult feat in all of mentalism, Joseph Dunninger's telephone number prediction test. But in order to do so, I will need the assistance of the entire audience. So all those in favor say aye. Aye. My name is Steve Sussman. We're here at J. Sussman Incorporated, which is a family-owned business since 1906. J. Sussman Inc. today manufactures uh, architectural metal uh, specialties all over the world. Uh, you know, many in Washington DC, many prestigious windows, which, kind, you know, which is fun. Wherever I go, my wife will tell you, I'm always pointing out all the projects that we've done. It makes it kind of, it makes it kind of fun. Uh, usually our windows are, are, are high-end, and they are unique, which gives you, you know, a lot of latitude for creativity. Magic has been a part of my life for probably close to 50 years. And sometimes it's, you know, you can't just press a button and take it out of your life. It seems no matter what I do, magic is always part of it, all right? Even in my business, uh, even though I might not have performed magic, I have done many seminars on products that we've created over here. And it's because of the showmanship that I learned from being a magician that helped me enhance my seminars around the country. And you can't get much better marketing than doing something like that. I could do all the advertising I want, but when I do a show within my own industry, it's probably the best marketing that you can get. There you go, one goes over here, over here, good, just like that. Watch closely. I take one band, I place it over Teresa's hands just like that. And I ask you once again, is there any way, without taking the bands off my fingers, is there any way I can get the band through the other band. Anyway, impossible? No way? Impossible. Watch close. Solid rubber. Hold your hand a little further apart. Can't go this way. Can't go this way. Watch closely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, God. One of my youngest, me one of my earliest memories of actually performing magic was when I performed for my mother's mahjong group. And one of the things was when I was younger, I had a stuttering and cluttering problem. I had, you know, I had a speech impediment. And one of the things I found that whenever I did something scripted, my stuttering would stop. And when I gave this performance in front of 75 to 100 people, I didn't stutter at all. And I remember after the performance, a lot of my mother's friends walking around saying, and this is the stutterer? Robbie, we begin by having you open the phone book. Make sure everything is in order, nothing is unusual. Make sure all the pages are consecutively numbered, numbered and they are alphabetized. I'm glad he doesn't inspect our weapons. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Would you please open the open the book to the last page of the book? That's the one on that side. That's right. Okay, good. And see, that, that's it. When I say last page, last numbered page. Tell us how many pages there are in the book. How many? It's 
877. Now, there are approximately 500 phone numbers per page, meaning there are over 500,000 or over half a million phone numbers in this book. And tonight, we're going to select one number, one lucky number out of over half a million phone numbers. Okay? So let us begin by selecting a page. I need three individuals to each call out single digit numbers. Someone who has not participated on this side, call it any number between one and 10. Yes. No, a single digit number. <laughs> Four. That's a good one. Okay, four, right? Someone over here who has not participated. Six. Oh, I don't trust a tennis player. <laughs> four, six. Okay, four, six. And one more person. Four, sixty-eight. Robbie, would you please open the book to page four hundred and sixty-eight? Take your time. Take it by the hour. Have we got it? Four hundred and sixty-eight. Your book, your, your poor book will never be the same. Okay? There's no 468. <laughs> You're right. It's a, it's a page torn out of the book. Could you, could you, uh, there was a there was a, a magic store in New York City called the I, I, what was it called the the Magic Center. And I would go there every weekend. I lived in Flushing. I would travel by the subway every weekend. I'd go to the Magic Center. I would buy books constantly, and there was a person, a, a magician there who kind of took me under his wing. His name was Al Stevenson, and he was really my first teacher. He had a, uh, a you know, a, a group, uh, you know, a group lesson going. Uh, I think it was twenty-five dollars for ten lessons, and then you get a bonus lesson at the end. The bonus lesson was you get to see Slidini, who was one of the greats, uh, you know, one of the greatest magicians who ever lived, and. He performed for us, uh, you know, magic that I've never seen since. Nothing, nothing comparable. And today, even today, Slidini is considered to be one of the three greatest close-up magicians who's ever lived. Eventually, the group disbanded, except for me. So I, it, so what ended up being a group lesson from Slidini, a one-hour lesson, became a less a private lesson just for myself, and it became a Sunday thing. Not only for one hour, but I would spend almost the whole day with Slidini for about three years, from the age of 15 above. And that was a tremendous part of my life. Sophia Loren, whenever she came to New York, she would go to Slidini's house. Uh, you have some great movie actors that, you know, that knew of Slidini. Not many did, because he was a close-up magician. Not a, he was a stage magician also, but really his real uh, forte was close-up magic. Mentalism is an area where people still believe in. Most, most modern day, you know, most people today do not believe in magic uh, because it's been exposed so much, you know, you know, uh, uh, and people don't expect, you know, if somebody wakes up with a silver dollar in their hand, they know that wasn't magic. It, it, does, it just doesn't happen. However, everyone has had a psychic experience of some sort or another. And during my show, while I try to make it seem real, after the show, I'll be the first person to admit uh, that nothing I do is, is uh, you know, uh, is supernatural. Everything I do is, you know, is, uh, uh, there are sound scientific reasons for it. I'm going to start now. Well, I'll stop whenever you want. Okay, Rhonda, I can stop here, which makes my job very easy. I can continue down or I can go back up. What do you prefer? Oh, I like a woman who can make up her mind. Would you please, Robbie, call out the number? 3794901. 3794901. Write in big bold letters 379. Letters. Four, nine, zero, one. Okay, Captain Walker, take the take the board. Stand in front of the table, if you will. Let's hold it up high so everyone can see it. Okay, out of over a half a million phone numbers in this book, one number was chosen under the fairest possible manner, and that number is audience. What's the number? Three, seven, nine, four. A few moments ago, I asked this audience, is it possible to predict the future? I believe with this audience, this wonderful, incredible audience right here at the Bryant Library from Roslyn, New York, I think anything's possible. One more time, hold that up. I didn't tell you to put it down. What's the number? Three, seven, nine, four, Who's got the scroll? I do. Come on up here. <laughs> you should be an actor. You're the wrong business. And come on, Rhonda, come up here also. Would you please, Wayne, take, just take the ribbon off. Rhonda, come here. Don't open it yet, Wayne. Would you please, 
Rhonda hold it. Wait, you hold the scroll. Rhonda will hold it the scroll. One more time, 3794901, open the scroll. We did it. Uh, people very often ask me how did I get into magic or what made me get into it and I probably I think the best answer probably would be by a famous uh, magician uh, that passed away maybe almost, you know, almost 10 years ago his name was Don Allen and they asked Don Allen uh, how did you, you know why did you become a magician and Don Allen said you don't become a magician because you uh, you want to be a magician you become a magician because you have to be a magician there's something inside of you that makes you get into that and you may find yourself living in a shotgun shack And you may find yourself in another part of the world And you may find yourself behind the wheel of a large automobile You may find yourself in a beautiful house with a beautiful wife.